Hey guys, it's Please ignore the zit on my forehead. My skin and I have been through a lot the past couple of months. <laughs> anyway, um, I decided I was going to try something new, even though the YouTube algorithm kind of punishes you for trying new things. But I mean, I never let it stop me before. Why would I let it stop me now? So today I'm gonna take some of my favorite singers and I'm going to turn them into Animal Crossing villagers. Now, out of all the setups I've had in my life, this is absolutely not my favorite. I mean, if I want to use my keyboard, that's back here. I don't really have much in the way of desk space, though maybe if I, uh... I live in a hotel. It's expensive and it sucks and I don't like it. It does have a little kitchenette though, so I, I guess it's not too bad. I mean, it better not be too bad. I'm paying like $3,000 a month for this, just so my, uh, yeah, because it would be pretty bad if I got stranded without my equipment. Before I get started, here's a quick living update. Uh, I recently moved to a different extended stay hotel. This one has a slightly cheaper rate. Uh, it's like $100 a night, including the taxes. So it's not, uh, it's not as bad as the other one. Smells a little better, has a kitchenette. Uh, still no real luck trying to find a more permanent living situation. Uh, I'm stressed out and running out of money pretty fast, but... <laughs> that just means I have to hustle harder. Whether I want to or not. Because I know I don't have any insurance that's going to be accepted in the state of Colorado because I'm from Kentucky. And I'm not even technically a Colorado citizen, so I'm like one medical emergency away from uh, being completely royally fucked, I think is the legal term for it. I'll be honest with you guys, it is extremely stressful, but uh, I'm going to try my hardest to make things work out. The weather's still kind of nice, it's tempting to just say fuck it and go camping to save some money <laughs> and get something permanent later, but... I have my fuzzy boys with me and, of course, all of my equipment, so I can't be irresponsible and throw caution to the wind. Uh, if all this had happened a couple weeks ago, yeah, I'd just be hanging out in a tent posting cell phone videos, but, um... Yeah, so I'm gonna try to get back into the swing of the YouTuber thing. I hope that helps clarify my current situation. Knock, knock, please don't eat that. And, you know, hopefully things will get better or at least uh, not continue to suck like this. So yeah, without further ado, we'll get into the video. Uh, first, we will start with Melanie Martinez because that's probably what you're here for anyway. Alright, Melanie. Uh, I don't remember how I laid out this video, but Melanie was actually the character I drew second. My first thought for what kind of animal she would be would either a small bear in reference to her song Teddy Bear or a bunny villager because she just kind of seems like a bunny. Like bunnies are cute and they hop around and stuff and her music kind of has I think some hip-hop elements to it and I think that's part of what sets it apart from others in her genre. Like does that make sense? I haven't listened to a lot of hip-hop but anyway. My instincts were leaning toward Bunny and against Teddy Bear because the song was really about a different character in her story, not Crybaby, who may not be Melanie herself, no, but Melanie seems to see a lot of herself in Crybaby, sort of like an, more of an alter ego thing. I asked you guys what you thought in the community panel, and everybody, just about everybody said Bunny, with a couple saying Bear. And it's funny, because this wasn't like a poll, it was all comments just saying Bunny. So I think all my viewers, without being prompted by multiple choice, either just kind of thought of her as a Bunny too, like, like we were all on the same page. So I went ahead and went with Bunny. I mean, <laughs> we can't all be wrong, right? There was this one outfit from her virtual tour from when she was performing High School Sweethearts that I felt translated very well to a bunny because of the headband she wore. Also, I had been looking for an excuse to draw her in that particular outfit for quite some time, as it's one of my favorites, possibly her my favorite look of hers ever. So I morphed the headband to ears, and I adjusted the proportions of that fantastically weird outfit that I... Is it a dress or... I don't know. Anyway, I adjusted it to the anatomy of the bunny character. For the colors, since Melanie has two-toned hair, I decided to base her fur pattern off the harlequin rabbit. It's known for its two-tone sectional 
color blockish fur. I don't know how to describe it. There's a picture. Why am I even trying to describe it? And I just matched the colors to Melanie's hair. For the face, I tried my best to capture Melanie's downturned eyes while coming up with a whimsical, circus-esque design that I thought she'd approve of. I also couldn't resist giving this bunny some freckles, as she's been putting on freckles with makeup lately, and I just felt like it worked with the design. For the pattern on the, uh, whatever you would call this, a, a two-piece dress, maybe? A blouse and skirt? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the pattern, I... Couldn't really tell what was going on from the screenshots I was referencing. The pattern was too busy, small, and blurry for me to copy accurately, so I decided to not even try and save myself the headache, you know? So since this is just a concept and not a finalized piece, I just, I gave into the laziness and used one of Fire Alpaca's default patterns. Then I gave Melanie the bunny some, this is pretty much the same sloppy shading as I ended up giving the Marina character. Uh, for what it is, I do think it came out pretty well, though after saving the image I realized I missed some spots on the coloring on the dress or whatever it is. Oops. Uh, I didn't notice when it was on a pink background, but it became obvious to me once I placed her on a blue back background with the other divas. You'll see it. Anyway, I think out of all of them, this one ended up being my favorite. Like, I don't think the average person would look at this out of context and just think, Melanie Martinez, ha! But, you know, seeing as how this is is a bunny. I mean, what more could I have done? <laughs> I guess I could have gone with a wider tooth gap, but I don't know. Also, I think this character would have been a peppy villager with a pastel house full of cursed artwork from Red. If not that, maybe a special character, you know, like whenever Katrina is in town, she'd have her own tin next door where you, she reads you your birth chart and channels your spirit guides. And, and of course, she would deliver the message in song form, obviously. An animal leads to the tune of high school sweethearts. Duh. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Have you ever wanted to be a YouTuber but like an actual good one with half decent quality that others will actually enjoy or at least half tolerate? I definitely can't help you with that one, but Skillshare can. Skillshare is an online learning community that's perfect for budding creators who value their time and money too much to waste it on art school. There are thousands of classes on there that can help you learn a new skill or perfect your passions. Classes are taught by experts in their field, and it's the best place to learn how to best express yourself in multiple art languages like singing, guitar, illustration, graphic design, etc. There's also classes on productivity, mindset, entrepreneurship, and even video production, which could all help you launch your career as a creative. YouTuber, podcaster, and tech head Marcus Brownlee teaches a class called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD, and that takes you through essential skills that you need to be a good YouTuber. For example, Marcus recommends hooking your audience within the first 10 seconds, and YouTube viewers tend to have short attention spans, so I agree this is vital. Since Skillshare is curated for learning, there are no ads to distract you from your learning journey, and they're constantly launching new premium classes for you to enjoy. And with many classes under an hour long, and features that let you skip from chapter to chapter, you can fit learning a new creative passion into your busy schedule. All classes are sub titled and with a transcript feature that makes it easy to follow along for neurodiversion or hearing impaired viewers. Skillshare's entire catalog of classes also now includes subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Dutch. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium, so you can start exploring your creativity today. And now it's Marina's turn. For the Marina concept, I, I, I just knew the species had to be a cat. Marina is a big fan of cats, for one. You can see her wearing multiple shirts with cats on them throughout the years. Uh, pretty sure she's a cat owner, etc. But also, and I can't find this clip anywhere, but I swear it exists. She iconically meowed prima donna girl at a bar. Awesome. Anyone who can meow their entire hit single without souring a single note is, like, not just a cat fan, but a cat themselves. I don't make the rules. I just draw the cursed images. The first thing I think of uh, when I think about Tumblr in the early 2010s is Electra Heart, but, you know, as iconic as the Electra Heart era is, in the interest in keeping these animals current and true to the star they represent, I decided to lovingly leave Electra Heart out of this one and went with one of the outfits she wore on her Live from the Desert tour. I actually uh, streamed that concert with my sister, and it was amazing, by the way. And, um, you know, this outfit's just far more true to who Marina is as a person. If I had drawn an Electra Heart cat, 
it would have felt like it was just drawing an Electra Heart cat, like not even Marina in a costume, but Electra Heart. But drawing her in this outfit, now that felt like drawing a Marina cat. Speaking of Electra Heart, for some reason I feel like she'd be an alpaca. I don't know why I feel that way. Anyway. I had some trouble throughout designing this concept as this was actually my first drawing in about two months or so. I don't know if this will be the first section in the video. I think I decided to move them out of order. But, uh, yeah. Getting back into the swing of things was always a challenge for me. So uh, not only did I have trouble nailing the Animal Crossing character proportions and art style, uh, something which would end up being a recurring problem for me, as you can see throughout this whole video. But I also had trouble with some of the most basic things, like clothing folds, you know, shading. <laughs> and just generally making the whole piece not look so awkward. <laughs> okay. I worked her makeup into, like, cat spot designs. And in my opinion, it came out looking kind of weird. I guess it's not that bad, but anyway, other than that, I think I did the best I could do making a cat look like a human while still keeping the Animal Crossing style and not entering too much of that creepy territory. Definitely didn't want this to go into the Uncanny Valley territory, you know what I mean? <laughs> so much of recognizability, you know, is based though in hairstyle and coloring. And I couldn't use any of those shortcuts for this project because, um, you know, the animals in Animal Crossing, one thing I noticed about them, very few of them have eyebrows. Almost none of them have hair. And when they do have hair, it's like drawn on their head like a helmet and it looks horrible. And uh, I know I probably just offended somebody's favorite villager. So uh, from the bottom of my heart, ah! thank you. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I didn't want to make them all flesh-colored because that would be so weird. Uh, so <laughs> I couldn't use any of those shortcuts. I had to rely on wardrobe and all things considered. This outfit did come out pretty good. I mean, especially when you consider that these are really just concept sketches at least and not finalized images. So it's more about conveying a cool idea than the execution. I guess. But overall, I'd say the Marina concept was not my worst. Not my best, but also not my worst, as you'll soon find out. Uh, I'm not sure you can look at this in two seconds, like, without context, knowing this is a Marina cat, but she really seems like she'd fit into the Animal Crossing world, at least. Uh, I tried to imagine exactly where this character would fit into the game, and I say this knowing full well it may not make sense to anyone else, or at least not the straights, but this is Marina's gayest era of them all, and thus she belongs in Animal Crossing's gayest event of them all. Like, I could see this character hanging around Festival, uh, dancing, singing, offering pragmatic advice to the player that kind of breaks the fourth wall, but not too much. Like, she seems like the type of character who would be there to, like, give you some kind of a gift in the festival, but maybe instead of, like, rewarding you with, like, furniture or something, which is a shame because the game really doesn't have that much furniture, I think she'd give, like, reactions, <laughs> the emotes, whatever they're called, like, you know, like, swaying back and forth, ideal for when you're holding vacation juice or an equivalent, and, uh, not coming back knocking on doors. Or spin around like a prima donna girl. Yeah, please don't judge me. I know I'm embarrassing to be around. And next we'll do Billy. For the Billie Eilish character concept, I immediately knew I wanted to use the outfit she wore when performing No Time to Die at the 2021 Life is Beautiful Festival. It's recent, which is the stipulation I set on myself when starting this project. Uh, no drawing of any of these women from when I first started standing them early on in their careers. And also, it's my favorite look of hers of all time. The pigtails and oversized clothes, I just feel like they really suited her energy as she bounced around on stage now. Uh, however, I was incredibly stuck trying to figure out what kind of animal she would be. Something cute but creepy, maybe. Uh, then I googled it and found out that she said before her favorite animal is actually a hyena. And I laughed quietly on the inside because that's just so perfect for her. Hyenas, while prey animals, register as more creepy than scary because their strange laughter makes the threat appear more ambiguous. Or at least that's what I think, that's my take. 
Uh, the only problem, there's no hyena character in the game except for one, and it's just built off the wolf model. And to me, that didn't really work out. Because when I think of hyenas, you know, I think of a totally different shape without the conical tufts of fur on the side. So I struggled between keeping this piece true to Animal Crossing as well as true to Billy. And honestly, I, I feel like I ultimately failed to make this look like an Animal Crossing character, but maybe that was just a caveat of portraying Billy. I get, I don't know. I could have toned down the creep factor by about 82 and not filled the eyes with black tears. That that might have helped a little bit on the uh, Animal Crossing world building front. Uh, <laughs> like I said, hyenas are already creepy, but uh, I don't even feel like this looked like a hyena in the end. Not even when I uh, decided to ditch the triangle ears and go with rounded ones, but like sometimes you just know when something's not working and you just want to be done as soon as possible so you can move on to something else. But Still, I wish I had taken more time to make the fur pattern more interesting. It didn't have to be all one solid color with spots on it. Overall though, yeah, my biggest issue with this isn't that it doesn't look like Billy or like a hyena, because somehow that's the part I feel like I managed to nail, but I failed the simple task of making her look like an Animal Crossing character. And for that reason, this is my second to least favorite overall. But I'll still try to come up with some lore. Let's see. Billy the Hyena is a special character who will come to your village at 5 a.m. the morning following you scanning her excessively overpriced amiibo. During the day, she appears as a normal hyena, sleepwalking through the town. Because hyenas are generally nocturnal, I think. Yeah. Uh, your villagers are concerned and suggest waking her up through various cozy gaming tasks like clapping, using a party popper, and the singing emote or whatever. Or maybe you have to catch her disease with a net. Something like that that's kind of mind-numbingly boring, but something that would be fun the first time you do it, but like the 80th time you're just bored and you're just like, ugh, I don't even want to do this. I once these tasks are finished, uh, Billy the Hyena awakes and remembers that she has a concert to perform that evening. Uh-oh. She scurries off to get ready, leaving you with a first row ticket. She performs No Time to Die, Bad Guy, Therefore I Am, and Happier Than Ever, all in Animalese. Because K.K. Slider, he just needs some competition, you know? Did you ever notice that? Like, I didn't really pay too much attention to it growing up, but it, you, your choices are K.K. Slider or K.K. Slider. <laughs> But anyway, finally, she performs when the party's over and black tears flow from her eyes when the concert is over. Your player character turns around to face the screen and... Your face is covered in black tears as well. The effect lasts until you next load the game. I put way too much imagination into that. Did I ever mention it used to be my dream to design video game concepts? I gave up because I draw kind of slow and I kind of suck, but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> Next. And finally, I'm going to be drawing Lana Del Rey. For Lana's character concept, I it was extremely tempting for me to go back to the Born to Die era because the aesthetic is really fun and easily recognizable, and I feel like if I had gone that route, pretty much anyone looking at this would look at it and be like, I know who that is, that's Lana. But with her new album, Blue Bannisters, uh, it came out October 22nd, I just I couldn't do her dirty like that, you know. Uh, I went with her outfit in Arcadia because I am utterly obsessed with that song, and I have been playing it pretty much more or less non-stop for the past couple of weeks. I could have consulted others on what kind of animal she'd be, but I knew in my heart she was a fancy pigeon. I don't know how to put into words why she is a pa fancy pigeon, but she is a fancy pigeon. She just lives and embodies a fancy pigeon lifestyle, aesthetic, and career. It doesn't matter why it makes sense, or if it doesn't make sense to you. It just it just makes sense to me. What I was less sure of was, should I use the small bird or the ostrich model? I eventually decided to base Lana the fancy pigeon off of the ostrich model because she has, like, this kind of a long, elegant neck, you know, and the ostrich has fancier tail feathers, so. Out of all of these, Lana the Fancy Pigeon was the most instinctive for me to draw. You know how uh, I went through, like, this multiple year-long period where I pretty much drew nothing but Melanie Martinez over and over and over and over again? <laughs> well, before that, the hostage of my artistic impulses was Lana, so I'm very accustomed to how her features work, and it was easy to make even a Fancy Pigeon look like her. Uh, it was so second nature to me, I didn't even have to think about it. 
Uh, with that said, it makes sense also why Melanie was so easy for me to draw, because practice it really does make perfect, or whatever. Because of that, there's not really much to say about the drawing process, it just kind of came to me. I wanted a pose that seemed kind of understated, maybe almost demure, sweet, but where you could still see there was like a really big charisma bubbling underneath, and I think this one turned out pretty well. It's not as obvious a favorite as the Melanie Martinez one, but I'd say it's a pretty close tie. Uh, I achieved what I wanted to achieve with this one. And I feel like you can see the character fitting in pretty effortlessly in the Animal Crossing universe. Lana the Fancy Pigeon, like Harv, has her own private island. She can mostly be found swinging in her backyard, singing to her family and friends. Oh, and of course, Tex and Mex. I, I can't forget Tex and Mex. They would be villagers there too. <laughs> or I guess they wouldn't be villagers if it's a private island. Wh whatever, whatever, you get what I mean. On Friday afternoons, she would hold barbecues that your character can attend after bringing the ingredients she needs for the signature dish of her cookout. Because, like, they're adding farming to the game, and I'm really excited about that. Or maybe you would have to assemble it yourself. Who knows? After you enjoy the cookout, she would sing an Animal Vlees version of her songs. How many does she have by now? Like, 600 songs, I think? <laughs> Give or take a few. And now for Poppy. I just... I kind of felt like four was too few, you know what I mean? So I decided to do a poll with some lesser known artists for everyone to vote for. And honestly, including Poppy was probably a mistake on that front because of course she's going to win by a landslide. I mean, I had been listening to her music since back when tickets to her show cost $20 and uh, you know, she was mostly just known for making weird satirical videos at the time. So I didn't realize how popular she was. I just I just didn't even think about it. Which I guess isn't that crazy, because her follower count is hidden. Whereas Phoebe Bridgers had uh, fewer subs than me right up until the Grammy nomination, I think. Actually, I think she might have been below me up until, like, her performance. It's, like, wild to me how she had so few on YouTube. Like, how could I have more subscribers than Phoebe Bridgers at any point? What the fuck? <coughs> Literally a crime. Anyway. For those of you who don't know, Poppy got her start on YouTube, and this year she became the first solo female Grammy nominee in the metal category, and I'm just really impressed by her growth, and I like this new direction she's been going in lately, I feel, and I don't know where, where I'm going with this, but I went with the outfit she wore to the Grammys where she performed Eat, her song about struggling with her eating disorder. Um, I, I just, I can't believe she did not win, because she absolutely slayed it. For what animal she would be, uh, one person suggested a tiger, and I decided to go the snow leopard route. I don't remember, and I think that comment became a top comment, I don't remember what their reasoning was, but it made sense to me. And on paper, it seemed like a good idea. You know, snow leopards are graceful, they're beautiful, elegant animals, but with all their rare beauty, you can't deny that they're powerful creatures. And I feel the same way about Poppy. She's shown a lot of strength over the past few years that a lot of people seem to doubt that she had in her. However, what works on paper doesn't always work in concept, and that's where the problems began for me, because as you probably know, the tigers of this game have a large, bulky frame compared to the other animals. So even the cartoonishly large sleeves of her Grammy outfit, it, it did nothing to balance out the large proportions of the tiger, and it just kind of threw everything off. It looked weird, and it just looked clumsy rather than graceful or powerful, and even if I adjusted things throughout the video, like her eyes and coloring, nothing worked. Even trying to make her spots look kind of like eyebrows did nothing to make her look any more like Poppy or any less awkward. So to me, this one was a good idea that came out as a big flop. Like, a change in pose would have probably helped a lot to remedy this, but I ended up just getting way too frustrated with this whole process to redo it. I just wanted to quit at this point. I wasn't liking it at all. According to my sister, who apparently pays more attention to my community panel than I do, a lot of people suggested I made her a squirrel, and I really wish I had done that instead. I should have made her a squirrel. You know, they're smaller, and, you know, Poppy is really small and slender, and the, the tiger thing, just, it didn't work. <laughs> you know, something small, like a squirrel, maybe a duck, you know, a, something you wouldn't think of as dangerous anyway, but I put a metal twist on it somehow, Anything would have been better than this, oh my god. Whatever the case, whether I like it or not, I'm going to try my best to tie this into the game.
Poppy the Snow Leopard can be found in remote areas on your island practicing her vocal technique, perfecting her metal screams and grunge growling for her latest track. Except she's pushed herself just a little too far and her throat is feeling a bit sore. And of all times, it's rain time to delay her recording her next album. She needs you to gather the ingredients for the singer's panacea. One wasp nest, a random bunch of fruit for your island, a coconut, and three weeds. Or some shit like that. Grateful for your help, she awards you with a random animalese metal song each visit. Because there just wasn't enough metal in that game, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys think? I think it's a good time to end this video because... Uh, they are vacuuming next door. So, yeah, which of these characters would you like to see in your game? Uh, is there a star that you'd like to see collab with Animal Crossing? Uh, let me know in the comments. Have a great day. I don't recommend subscribing. My channel sucks. See ya. And blessed be motherfuckers. <coughs>